You all know why we've come here. The patrons have pushed us into a corner. Their magic has grown too powerful to hold in check. These villains are stealing the worship of our own followers. We must do something before they marshal their forces, before they destroy us and all we stand for. We've come to the Vortex to destroy the world. Life will be better after the Sundering. Our followers will live on in the new worlds of air, fire, stone, and water. Our enemies will be trapped in the labyrinth to contemplate their dark ways. And we will guide the new order into the future. Help me, my friends. Let us summon the world seal and begin the process of healing. together all of Earth's elements. As we sunder it, so do we sunder the world. Thus we begin a new age. Two thousand years ago, the Sartan Council sundered the world into five realms. One of them was a nightmarish prison called the Labyrinth, and into it was banished the entire patron race, your ancestors. This is the place you've always called home, and all you've ever wanted is escape. Your name is Haplo, and you are a patron. Not long ago, Lord Zar, the most powerful patron sorcerer of his generation, broke through the labyrinth's final gate. In doing so, he paved the way for others to follow. The path was still difficult, but not impossible. Your travels led you to the final gate, where the combined forces of the labyrinth waited to turn you away. The fight was hopeless. Alone you never would have survived. But then Lord Zar appeared, and with his help you were able to rout the dark monsters of the labyrinth. What followed is hazy, you remember stumbling out of the final gate, but then you collapsed on the ground, and Lord Zar's concerned face faded to darkness as you lost consciousness.
Ah, Haplo. Do you feel well enough to talk, my son? I was worried. You took some serious wounds in your dash for the final gate. It was all I could do to repair your heart rune and heal you. The few weeks since you escaped the labyrinth should have been enough time to recover, but we don't want to rush it. I know you have a lot of questions. I'll do my best to answer them, but first I'd like to give you some history. You've spent your life trying to escape the labyrinth and hating the Sartan who consigned our race there. But you don't really know the full story. Even I didn't know everything when I escaped, but I learned quickly. You see this city around us? The Sartan made this. They made it for us, if you can believe it, for when we emerged from the labyrinth. We were supposed to be docile, rehabilitated, brainwashed. Instead, we hate our Sartan jailers more than ever. There are libraries here, stocked with books. Since my escape, I've been studying them. They tell me much, but not all. There are mysteries I cannot explain, but I will tell you everything I've learned. Two thousand years ago, our patron ancestors warred with the Sartan. We were winning. It was only a matter of time until we defeated the evil sorcerers, took our rightful place as leaders of the world, and freed the other races from their slavery to the Sartan. In desperation, a Sartan named Sama hatched a fiendish plan. He intended to sunder the world into five realms. Four of these realms would be homes to the mench races, elves, humans, and dwarves. The fifth is here, the Labyrinth. It was supposed to serve as a prison for our race. They created a magic artifact called the World Seal. With it, they succeeded in sundering the world. Our ancestors were trapped in the labyrinth, and the rest of the world was broken into the other four realms. They planned to lord over the realms and administer the labyrinth as we were rehabilitated. But something happened. They just disappeared, and with them, all of their good intentions. Without the guidance of the Sartan, the labyrinth became a slaughterhouse. Its magic made it aware, intelligent, and it wanted our blood. Life was a living hell for our people. But instead of breaking us as the Sartan wanted, the Labyrinth has made us stronger. Many of us have escaped despite the Labyrinth's best efforts. I go back in every day to aid others in their way. I only needed to take you a few hundred feet. You even demanded that you cross the final gate on your own, without any help, before you passed out. You should be proud. Now, my son, I need you. Since my escape, I have been devising a plan to restore our people to our once glorious position. It is our birthright. To this end, you must carry out a very special mission for me. I need you to go into these realms. You'll not only be gathering information, but searching for the seal itself. With it in hand, I plan to reform the world from the broken pieces that the Sartan left us. But here I've been dominating the conversation. You must be very confused. I'm sure you have many questions for me. I'll detail my plan later. How exactly did the Sartan sunder the world? The Sartan commanded their dwarven slaves to forge an artifact called the World Seal. It consisted of five metal hexagons, each inscribed with a rune, a symbol, which represented one of the five realms. They broke the seal apart, and as they did, the world broke apart as well. It was sundered into the five realms, and each seal piece went into the realm that it named. As you see above my head, the seal piece that names the Nexus is here. Tell me about the other realms. Certainly, my son. The Sartan sundered the world into five realms. They based four of them on the elements, air, fire, stone, and water. The fifth, of course, is the labyrinth. They are all separated by large distances, too far to travel in a lifetime. That's why the Sartan created the Death Gate. Through it, people can travel from one realm to any other. Can you tell me about the Realm of Air? The books here are rather sketchy about the realms. But of all of them, the World of Air, or Arianus as the Sartan named it, is the one I'm most familiar with. It's made up of many separate continents which float in the air. 
The lower continents are populated by the dwarves. Those islands are plagued with almost continuous electrical storms. The higher continents, with much better weather, are homes to the humans and elves. Perhaps it indicates a pecking order in the match. Who knows? The books don't say much more about it, regrettably.